Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Natalie Pennington and I'm an assistant professor and the graduate student coordinator in the communication studies department at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, I'm excited to talk about research methods and my research with you all today, uh, so I'll go ahead and jump on in. Uh, the first question asks what topics I'm interested in studying. Most of my research is centered around communication technology and relationships. Uh, I primarily look at social media, but I've also studied things like texting and video chat uh, and all the things in between. Uh, a couple of projects that I've done to kind of give you a sense of what I look at, uh, I've studied grief communication in social media, so how we gain social support by going to the page uh, of a person who's passed away, uh, and sort of how relational closeness plays a role in that as we communicate our loss. Uh, I've looked at political interpersonal communication and conflict through social media, how we can uh, be motivated to communicate about politics, uh, but also how our different relationships might influence whether we talk or not and how we respond to disagreement. Uh, I've also studied most recently, and this is kind of my big area, uh, I'm really interested in how our networks have grown as a result of social media use. So I might have my 10 to 15 people that are like my close ties no matter what, uh, but suddenly social media, you might have a thousand plus friends or followers. And so I'm really interested in what happens uh, in terms of our communication patterns and interactions uh, with those large networks. Uh, in terms of the paradigms that guide my work, uh, I think I primarily identify as a post-positivist, uh, but I have done some interpretive work as well uh, that kind of plays into my method choices, which is the next question. Uh, I have used almost all of the different quantitative and qualitative methods. So I've done studies that are experiments. I've done surveys. I've done content analysis that's both quantitative and qualitative. I've done interviews. I've done focus groups. Um, for me, it's really the what's the question I want to ask, and then I kind of start to think through what methods best fit that as a result. Uh, in terms of the skills that I think are important for new researchers to learn, I think organization for me is the number one, right? Keep organized, track, make sure that you know that there's steps to follow because if you miss a step or you don't have that organization, uh, then you could end up with data that's unusable uh, or not be asking the questions that actually answer what you're trying to figure out in the end anyway. Um, so being organized and following those steps, the research design process I think is so important. Uh, I think a lot of people get scared in quantitative research methods class in particular, uh, because data analysis and stats and numbers, uh, but so much of quantitative methods is that design, and then the stats are just the outcome, right? Like the stats are, you know, you can work on that, we can learn those things. Um, but if I don't have a good sense of how to design and organize a study, uh, then everything else can be a wash for me. Uh, in terms of a project that I'm working on right now that I am really excited about, as I mentioned, I really am interested in sort of how we can uh, make sense of our relationships online and how things like strong ties versus weak ties, our large networks influence things. Um, so I have two projects I'll mention. Uh, one study I'm working on with Dr. Kelly Winfrey from Iowa State University. She's one of my good friends. Uh, she studies gender and politics. Uh, Kelly and I have come together uh, to look at political interpersonal communication and conflict. Uh, that occurs online and how things like gender might influence how we respond to or engage uh, in disagreements through social media. Uh, with this study, I'm really excited to think about how things like I might uh, play nice with somebody I'm close to, uh, but uh, avoid uh, conversations or unfriend people that I'm not close with. Uh, it can kind of go both ways, and so I'm really interested to see what happens. Uh, we're doing a survey study for this because we've looked at the topic before, uh, but if you know if we were unfamiliar with what's going on, then I might start with interviews and just talk to people who've experienced conflict and disagreement uh, to get a sense of that. And so that's for me saying, again, those how those methods might inform my choices. Um, another study that I'm working on that I'm pretty excited about uh, is looking at our relationships and how they've been sustained through technology, um, both inside the house and outside of the house during COVID-19. So I did uh, a bunch of qualitative interviews um, with college students in the fall, uh, and I'm excited to chat uh, and sort of think about what that means in terms of our relationships, uh, the strength that we have with those. So some people have said, you know, I just don't have time and I'm not meeting people as much. So uh, weak tie relationships are falling to the wayside. At the same time, other relationships like coworkers are getting stronger because those are the people you're spending the most time around. Uh, so definitely kind of interesting as we think about how our lives have changed uh, during COVID-19. Um, the last question asks, what methods, topics could I talk about for hours uh, and why and why is it important for you to know? Uh, this one for me, I think, is that research question. Uh, I was always scared of quantitative methods when I was a new researcher. Uh, I actually did 
qualitative through undergrad and my MA program. And then when I started my PhD program and met my uh, soon-to-be advisor, Dr. Jeff Hall, he brought me on on a study and um, it was a big quantitative project. It was very intensive. Uh, and I realized that the questions I'm wanting to ask are very quantitative in nature. And so I, instead of saying, oh, you know, I want to ask this, but I'm going to do interviews, I realized that there were reasons why I should get comfortable with quantitative methods as well, so I could answer the questions that I was really wanting to know. Um, and, and that's what I think is really important, is that people get stuck on and say, oh, quant's scary, I'm going to do interviews, but you actually really want to know something that's better suited another way. Uh, so for example, uh, me and Jeff actually did a study together this past year where we were interested in how uh, Facebook enabled communication uh, would influence or not uh, relational closeness with weak tie relationships over time. Uh, and really what that just means is I said, you know, if I go on Facebook and I like post from somebody who I haven't seen face to face in a while, an old classmate, uh, an old coworker, uh, do I feel closer to them over time because we've had that communication or does that have no effect on the relationship at all? Uh, and because that's what we were interested in, uh, and this overtime element, it meant the best fit here was an experiment, right? So we tested at three time points. Okay. How close do you feel to them? All right, now communication that's occurred in the last month and how close do you feel? And then a third time point. And that allowed us to compare and say, again, this over time, is it really doing anything? Uh, and it wasn't, by the way, if you're curious, spoiler alert. Uh, but that was a reason why an experiment made sense. Uh, but for example, with my dissertation, uh, one thing I was really interested in was what are topics that make people um, unfriend or unfollow somebody on social media? So when we communicate about particular things or in a particular way, does that cause us to sever that? relationship. Uh, and when I got started with that study, I realized that while there were a couple of topics that had come up a time and again, like politics or oversharing, uh, there wasn't really a good list for me. So I actually did focus groups first and the focus groups brought people together and said, let's just talk. What are reasons you have or you've heard of uh, people unfriending or unfollowing? And this allowed me to generate a really big list uh, and then condense that down to 13 main topics uh, that helped me to then test those by saying, okay, here's a relationship, here's a way, would you unfriend or unfollow, uh, and allowed me to really get at communication. And so I needed those focus groups to inform uh, the survey that followed where I experimentally tested particular relationships. Uh, so that just shows how different questions might inform different areas. And I think that uh, it's important as a new researcher uh, to be okay with that and know that you should think about the thing that excites you, right? And instead of trying to Pick a topic that doesn't excite you so you can do a method that you think is easier. Um, let what you're trying to do guide where you take it. Um, so that's really my big advice or my helpful tidbit. Uh, I've enjoyed talking and I'm excited for this video series. And uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening.